Continuing with geometric sequences, here we need to find the missing terms and fill in those blanks. Our first term is 2. The last term that we know about is 1,250. First we need to figure out what r is, and then we'll multiply each time to fill in those blanks. Since here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, n is 5. The last term that I know is 1,250, equal to the first term that I know, which is 2, times r to the power of n minus 1. I just said n was 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Now to get this variable by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 2. 1250 over 2 is 625, equaling r to the fourth. Now we need to take the fourth root of 625. The fourth root of 625. And that comes out to be 5. So our value of r here is 5. That means that from one number to the next, we are multiplying by 5 each time. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 5 is 50, 50 times 5 is 250, and let's make sure 250 times 5 is in fact 1250, so that means we got this correct. Number 6, we're starting with 0.5, ending with 512. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers, we have 6 different terms, so n is 6, the last term that I know about is 512 equal to the first term that I know about, 0.5, times r to the 6 minus 1, which is 5. So now we need 512 divided by 0.5, which is 1,024. That's equal to r to the fifth. Now we're going to take the fifth root of both sides. And our value of r here is 4. That means each time we're multiplying by 4. So 0.5 times 4 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, 32 times 4 is 128, and 128 times 4 is 512. Now we need to write an equation for a sub n of each geometric sequence, and then find the fifth term. We know a sub 3 is 16, and a sub 1 is 1. First I need to figure out what r is and then we will figure out our equation and our fifth term. The last term that I know about is this a sub 3. I'm going to use that number equal to my first term which is 1 times r to the power of and then we have 1, 2, 3 to get from a sub 1 to a sub 3 and 3 minus 1 is 2. So now we have 16 equal to r squared which means our value of r is 4. So our equation, in general, would be a sub n equals 1 times 4 to the n minus 1, which you could also just write as 4 to the n minus 1 because 1 times that wouldn't change it. So now for a sub 5, we need 4 to the power of 5 minus 1, which is 4 to the 4th. which is 256. In number 8, we have a sub 3 and a sub 6. I don't have a sub 1, so the first term that I know about is this a sub 3. The last term is a sub 6. So let's figure out what a is. To get from a sub 3 to a sub 6, we have a sub 3, sub 4, sub 5, and sub 6. So our value of n here is 4. The last term that we know about, a sub 6, is 1. The first term that we know about is 8 times r to the power of 4 minus 1, which is 3. Dividing by 8, we just have 1 over 8 equal to r to the third. Now we need the cubed root of both sides. The cubed root of 1 over 8 is 1 half. So r is equal to 1 half. So our general equation would be a sub n equals now we don't know a sub 1, so to find a sub 1 I'm going to work backwards from a sub 3. Since to go forward I would be dividing by 2, so to go backward I'm going to multiply by 2. So a sub 3 times 2. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. That means my a sub 1 is 32. So now I have 32 times 1 half to the n minus 1. For a sub 5, I'm going to use 32 
times 1 half to the 5 minus 1, which is 4. And I can put that in my calculator, 32 times 1 half to the power of 4, which is 2. Or you could have also worked backwards from a sub 6 and just multiplied by 2, but the same idea as what we did from a sub 1.